Hi, this is George Cow, and today I'm here with one of my clients, Kim Marie, and she has some wonderful um, transformational wisdom to share with us today, as well as we'll start with a, with a few minutes of um, business lessons from building her coaching business over the years. But first, I want to say hi. Hi, Kim. Hi, George. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate being here. Yeah, thanks for being here. So I'm going to read out your bio, Kim, first um, so that everyone has some context, and then we'll go into talking a bit about what you learned as you've uh, built up your coaching business over the years. So um, Kim Marie is a transformational life and leadership mentor. She guides people to reconnect with the roots of who they are and what matters most. Kim reanimates a sense of purpose and empowerment with her unique blend of archetypal wisdom, character strengths, esoteric and indigenous wisdom, and habit-breaking programs that empower individuals to break the chains of old patterns and conditioning and bring solace to their soul. And that word solace, we'll, we'll talk about that, certainly. Um, Kim is a guide on the journey from the numbing status quo to the sense of peace and fulfillment that comes with being aligned with our true self. And you can learn more about Kim at her website, Kim mariecoaching.com and of course i'll put the link in the notes of the video so kim um just uh before we get into um you're going to be sharing with us the kind of the four stages of the uh the, the hero heroine's journey and i'm really looking forward to that but before we get there a lot of the folks watching this are are entrepreneurial and, and building a business of, uh, of their of their own so you've got a couple of lessons that you wanted to share in in building yours so i'll kind of let you let you share those and then, and then uh, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I've actually been doing this work for nine years. I actually just had my nine year anniversary. So that was a big deal. Um, and at the same time, I have not been 100% sustainable. So I've been supplementing my income with part time jobs. I happen to be a single mom. So it's always been kind of this juggling act where. Um, you know, I feel very stretched thin a lot of times. And what I notice is that even if I can't always be consistent with what I'm doing in my business, if I constantly sit in my heart and just keep coming from that place of heartfelt authenticity, then people will resonate with me. You know, they'll, they'll come back and say, wow, that really spoke to me or wow, that really, that really helped me um, feel something deep within me. And, and, I feel in a way that I can pick up right where I left off. So that that's like the biggest lesson is coming from coming from that place of heart and um, and really continuing to learn through that over the years that when I speak my truth and the wisdom that I've gained from my own experiences, it just it always makes a big difference and resonates with people. So that's yeah, and and by resonating you mean people step up and say, Hey, I want your support, I want your coaching support in my life yeah. Uh, and yeah it's it, absolutely absolutely so um, I just want to say I mean being being a single mom you got two two boys right yeah two um, teenage boys, <laughs> boys. my like, god you, you have basically two full-time jobs plus you have some part-time additional work aside from your business as well so I just want to I want to honor the fact that you uh, you you have you have a lot in your plate and and the fact that you are still um, continuing to come back with authenticity to your business nine years. I mean, the fact that you are now with renewed energy, continuing to come back and reconnect and build. And you just had, I mean, before, before this, we we're talking, you just sold, um, 300, 300 of yeah, your, 380, yeah. 380 of your sacred nights journal. And so that's not, that's not nothing. That's a, that's a lot of people who are buying into your product and then doing the process with you. And so, yeah, so I want to congratulate you on that. Um, so anything else you want to say before we move on to the, the hero's journey? Yeah, I, I do want to point out too that the other big lesson that I think is, is critical, and you, you commented about, you know, that by resonate, it means people say, hey, I want to work with you. I have found as much as I, I can say that I can miss consistency and come with heart and that helps, I will also say consistency is one of the biggest things I've learned because when I am consistent, that's what really builds the trust. You know, like people may resonate, but they might not always enroll unless I am more consistent. I do find that when I'm more consistent, 
the enrollments happen more regularly, more frequently, more easily, more readily. So that's that's always been a big challenge. Like I said, feeling stretched thin, but um, you know, coming from the heart helps for sure. And I think it's number one, but that consistency would have to be number two for me in terms of what I've learned. So, and that's something you've reinforced so much and, and, um, it really resonates and is so true for me too. Wow. That's, that's great. And especially somebody who has a lot on their plate, really busy like yourself, that consistency is maybe more challenging, but the funny thing is, you know, one of the, one of the old, old lines is like, about the old sayings about busyness like oh if you want something done give it to a busy person <laughs> and so in, in a way you um have had to just be really efficient with your time and and with consistency it's like if you can find a way to slot that into your time and and make it a habit then even with all that you have to do you're coming back to you know connect with your audience bless them is yes. it's gonna happen you know yes right? So that's, that's really great. So I would love for you to share with us um, what you've learned in your own work with clients over the years in terms of the, the hero, heroine's journey. I know, you, I know you have four stages that you want to talk, talk to us through briefly. It's not, not like we have, a, I mean, we wish, I wish we had hours and hours to talk about this because there's a lot. But, but yeah, just share with us, give us an overview of, of, of that. Yeah, yeah. So, so over the years um, of coaching and teaching classes and running programs and different things, what I've come to see, and I, I have a deep passion for the hero's journey myself. And so looking at that um, and understanding like Joseph Campbell's amazing stages of the hero's journey, um, looking at that along with a lot of the other wisdom teachings that I've come across and then seeing the experiences that clients have had and that I've had in my own life, what I have found is there are four main stages that we all go through and that if we understand these stages, we can stay connected on our path a whole lot more potently and consistently and um, easily. And, and we feel like we're just more in that flow. And I like to equate the stages to the water of life. So I look at it as, you know, you begin, you have all these tributaries, okay? And, and these tributaries kind of represent parts of ourselves and we might have some that are rushing and flowing really strongly and some that are dried up and barely trickling and others that are just kind of still and running smoothly and we never know but there's all these aspects and, and it's about looking at these aspects of ourselves and that stage I call remembering this is the remembering of who we are you know noticing these parts of ourselves that maybe we've forgotten or lost track of or ignored or for whatever reason whether it's you know, traumas or experiences or even cultural you know impositions if you will societal uh, norms that we're trying to conform to so that first stage of really remembering who we are understanding the parts of ourselves and then continuing with that water analogy we have this idea that these tributaries eventually flow into the river and so you have this reconnection that's the next stage we remember and then we start to reconnect it all we bring it together into the flow of the river which of course the river needs the flow the water going through it but it also needs the river banks and so this idea of connecting it's a beautiful um, blending of what I like to call the healthy sacred feminine along with the healthy sacred masculine we have to have both and we tune into that within ourselves. We reconnect to our values, to what matters to us, to what feels important, um, you know, to who we really are, remembering it, but then reconnecting to it. And from there, the river flows into the ocean of possibility, is how I like to look at it. So we're flowing into this next stage, which is the re-envisioning stage. And when we re-envision our life based on what we've now remembered, and what we've reconnected to. So we're standing in this truth of who we are, or at least a remembering of that truth. We might not be quite there yet in terms of really embodying it yet. And we're standing in the values that we've reconnected to. Now we can say, you know what? I have a different vision for my life. I have a different perspective now that I can look at things differently. But just as with any ocean, you know, there can be big waves that can topple you over. We might need to learn to swim or float or surf. And we have to, we have to be able to navigate those kinds of different 
um, terrain or, or weather, if you will. And so I find that that re-envisioning stage, when people are going through that, it can actually be one of the hardest. You know, it's like it, they feel like they might be drowning because there's so much and they realize maybe that a lot of what they're doing in their life now isn't fully aligned with what they really see for themselves based on this new remembering and new connecting. And, but once they are able to learn to surf, to learn to float, to learn to swim, then it's, it's this beautiful recycling. I, I really believe this journey is a spiral journey. And so it's like that water evaporates up into the clouds to become rain, to pour down and, and replenish the tributaries to bubble up with new springs and we get to start again. And, and that's really a rebirthing process. We rebirth as we rise up and we share this new vision. We start to step into and embody this new truth that we found about ourselves. And then we give back. We give back that wisdom. We share that wisdom. And then we go and we look deeper. We start to go into the deeper layers. And so those are the four main stages that, um, that I really see all the clients, I've seen it in myself, in my own journey. I see it in the overarching hero's journey that jo Joseph Campbell talks about, this remembering, reconnecting, re-envisioning, and ultimately rebirthing into mm. something new. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. I would love for you to kind of give us some, something like some, some example, or uh, if it's a, whether it's a story from your own life of, of applying these stages or it's some a client you know, anonymous uh, or or just a story from a friend or something just uh, help us to see how these four stages might be connected i don't know if that's if if these four stages are applied to any particular area of life or is it sort of the holistic view that you work with clients on so yeah um oh well, it's a great question so um two things i'm thinking of and one is, so I remember a number of years ago, I had this situation in my life where I noticed that leadership seemed to be a really strong aspect of what I loved and what I felt naturally inclined toward, but I also attracted clients in the realm of leadership. Um, and so, but I thought to myself, well, you know, I'm coach trained, yes, and I have like an incredibly diverse background, which I could spend a long time talking about here, but I won't. But I started going, yeah, but you know, I didn't do any formal leadership training. So who am I to, to do this? But this was me looking at the tributaries, like these aspects of myself where I went, wow, but you know, I've shown up as a leader there and there, and isn't that interesting that this has happened? And, and I was in meditation one day and I just had this huge aha moment because I kept questioning myself in relation to my business and saying, but you know, who am I to help leaders? Because what do I have? And I felt like I got yelled at by my guides where they said, what do you want? You've been in the military officer training. You've, you've managed corporate accounts. You've done this, 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 and that. You know, you've done all these things. What more leadership training do you need? You know? <laughs> and that was what I felt like I was hearing. And all of a sudden it reconnected. And I went, oh, yes, this is where I belong. This is, this is who I am. And it's always been who I am. And I think because I left corporate and government work, I always felt, especially according to the status quo, that I was a failure on some level. Like I had failed at leadership because I chose not to stay in those areas that didn't resonate for my soul. And, and then I had this huge epiphany that was like, no, actually that was the most courageous thing you could do. You left and so many of your peers are still there and actually miserable because they, they just kept going because that's what you're supposed to do, or that's where the income is, or that's, you know, what they feel they're, they have to do because that's the training they're used to, or whatever the reason is, so many people stay stuck in that. And so that led to this re-envisioning, you know, what can I do now? How can I bring this to my work? How can I show up and really stand in that leadership and, and reframe the story that I had about me being a leader and showing up for leaders? And, um, and ultimately, you know, that's, that's been a huge rebirthing process in my business and how I've shown up for others. And uh, so that's, that's one example of this, this four-stage process. And 
I just wanted to mention that within each of the stages, another thing that I also started attracting was I would get clients who they were leaders, but they had also been through some significant addiction challenges, whether it was um, even just really significant habits and patterns, not necessarily hard substances, but some were. I, I, I got some clients that were like maybe eight years recovered alcoholic or 20 years or whatever it was. And I started noticing a correlation between the habit breaking patterns that I had used and the AA program. And, um, and so there were 12 stages or 12 virtues. I know you work with the virtues, George, and, and work with those as part of your energy reboot each day. And, and I have 12 virtues that I practice month by month, you know, month to month. And, and I noticed they correlated very strongly with like the 12 step program and for habit breaking and 12 steps of the hero's journey. And what I saw was the virtue that I work with as that correlates to the first step that I want to share with your audience is courage. Oh, and, and before you go there, so <laughs> you mentioned we've talked about the four stages of the, of the hero heroine's journey, but then how does the 12 steps relate to the four stages? Maybe you can. Yeah. So that. within each of the four stages, there are three steps. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, so that remembering, you know, if we're going to take that, that um, step, that leap to really look at a different aspect of ourselves, it requires tremendous courage because part of it is we also have to be willing to face what we, what we have been, what we have forgotten. And that can be hard. It can bring up shame. It can bring up um, anxiety and it, it's often very challenging and it's not at all unlike the addict whose first step is I have a real problem here that I need to change and I can't do this by myself. And it takes tremendous courage for us to step into that place of humility, um, surrender, and take that step into courage, which was the virtue I was working with. I was working with the virtues for over a decade. And then I started seeing the correlation with the 12 step program and the hero's journey. So this has been this incredible evolution um, which, you know, has, has created the, the foundation of my work. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. I don't know if you can hear my, my dog is, uh, <laughs> is, is <courageous laughs> Hi, buddy. Going, going to the door. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. And I could see why clients can benefit so much from your work because you have a very clear framework of mm -hmm. transformation and you have, uh, I mean, I can see how this, the four stages or these virtues or the 12 steps can apply to, you know, career. It can apply to, um, you know, habit breaking and habit creation. It could apply probably to relationships and, and probably to health and, 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 you know, family relationships, et cetera. So, um, do you want to mention a couple of the life areas or issues that you find you really enjoy working with clients on? Yeah, you know, I love that you just said all these areas because, um, you know, you've posted a lot of things and written a lot about whether we should niche or not niche. And um, that's been a struggle of mine because what I find is every time I try to niche, I get, you know, something totally different that shows up as my next client. <laughs> and, and I've really surrendered into that aspect that, no, this is about a journey to the soul. And to your point, when, when that is where we're going, whatever the issue is, whether it is the relationships and the communication that we need to, to you know, work on or improve upon, or it's our vocation and how we're showing up and how we're making a difference and, and how we're aligned authentically or not, or whether it's our family and parenting. You know, I've had clients in all of these different realms and ultimately it's always about coming back to the self, to the true essence of who you are, because in that way, you, you naturally don't want to do unhealthy things, for example, or you naturally find yourself wanting to serve and, and be the best of yourself for your children or for your, your boss or your, your you know, employees or your coworkers or whatever it is. And, and people find, I remember when I did my very first group, pro, group coaching program, one of the women was saying to me, my husband is changing so much. I don't understand why, but it wasn't him that's changing. It was her that was changing. You know, that it was this aspect of, you know, she was showing up differently, learning to communicate differently with him and, and seeing something happening and transforming. 
that wasn't even necessarily on her list of why she showed up in my program. So that's what I love about the work is that it really gets to the root of our inner wisdom and our inner knowing and the truth of who we are. Yeah, that's beautiful because when we know how to transform in that deep way, uh, yeah, it affects all areas of our life and it affects people around us in positive ways because we're transforming in positive ways. So I love that. Um, I would love for you to take a couple minutes and tell us about the Solace program. Uh, this is a, is it a new way that you're now working with clients or you t tell us about that? Yeah, thank you. So you mentioned earlier, uh, my sacred nights of winter journal and, um, solace kind of evolved out of that. I, every year, um, for five years now, I have put out a journal that people work with between Christmas and, um, epiphany. So it's December 24th through January 6th. And it's, a journal that takes people through these 12 virtues, um, one night associated with each month of the coming year, and the journal becomes a guide for your new year. Like if you take the time to commit to the journaling, it becomes this guide. And many, many people wanted to know, how can I keep this going through the year? How can I continue this work and make sure I stay aligned with all this great journaling that I've done during the sacred nights? And so I created a program actually a couple of years ago. I did a local program here. I live in Boulder, Colorado and had a group um, here working on the on this process and it was so transformative. And as I've continued the Sacred Nights nice work, more and more people are asking. So this is the first year that I've created a program that's online and available to everyone um, anywhere. And I'll be having monthly wisdom teachings that associate with these 12, you know, these 12 virtues, but it'll, over time, it's kind of meant to be an on, ongoing membership that supports you. I wanted to create something sustainable that was sustainably affordable, but also um, something that could keep working with you in day-to-day -day life. Because to me, if it's something that feels really removed and you're studying it and it's separate from your day-to-day -day life, it's not it's not gonna stick. It's not gonna become a practice that lives in you every day. So that's kind of how Solace was born. And um, it's really, again, a jer that journey to the soul, <laughs> to this true self and, and, and reconnecting and, and remembering and re-envisioning uh, what you wanna create for yourself. So, yeah. It's yeah. great. And there's Solace, there, you have a couple of ways people can work with you and with, with Solace. There's, one way that's just the um, the monthly teachings, right? Or, or, and then there's another level where they get to work with you one to one, and etc. So it's kind of like however people want to engage with that, they can. With exactly. These exactly. Yeah. That everybody can be. And I did change. I had. I used to sell coaching packages where I would sell maybe six at a time. And it had a certain price. And again, that lump sum was often challenging for people. So I really wanted to move to more of a monthly situation where it became part of your monthly budget, part of the ongoing work that is a priority in your life. And so I decided Solace is going to be for everyone, all of my clients. So, so they can have the coaching package, but Solace is automatically a part of it. So they're getting this wonderful structure, like those riverbanks, right, <laughs> that they can flow through and and have something to work with each month and then um and then the personalized coaching if that's what they want as well to focus on their own personal specific challenges and you know relationships or work or whatever it is that they're wanting to dive deeper into and apply the principles to then we can go into that as well so yeah yay that's great i will make sure that there's a link for the solace program specifically in the notes of the video so if if you've been watching this or listening to this and you resonate with the hero and hero's journey, you can maybe see yourself uh, in, in somewhere in, along the journey or wanting to take that journey and you want a uh, qu very qualified and compassionate coach to help you transform through that journey into your heart's and soul's wisdom, your true self. Um, I recommend you check out Solace and, and contact Kim. She's very approachable and she, she can answer any questions. So, Kim, thanks for um, being here today and thanks for your, your wonderful work. Uh, is there any kind of final words of wisdom or solace that you want to leave us with oh, as we finish? Thank it you, George, so much. It's really been such a delight to connect with you and your community. And I joined your Master Heart program this year. And 
um, I'm just super excited because it feels like something I get to give myself as solace for my soul, but, but in, a, in a resonant way that, that is that sustainable concept. So I just want to say thank you so much, and I really appreciate you and the community that you've created. Well, it's, it's a real joy to have you in the community. So thank you, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, how people can benefit from, from your work. Thanks, Thanks again. So